you are ready to install your flight controller. But before you do, I thought it'd be a really good time to pause for a tour of the flight controller. Learn what it's capable of and what parts you're using and what parts, well, we don't need right now, but you can experiment with it in the future if you choose to. Let's get started. This is your flight controller. Let's open it up and see what's inside. Many parts you need and many you don't. And here we are with everything out of the package. Your flight controller, your cable bundle, and your pins. Now, as you recall, we opened this up before and we had cut off this particular part to power our flight controller. So other than that, you don't need this except for spare parts in the future. So let's just put it away. These are called pins and we're going to work with pins because for you, they're like training wheels. If you try to do direct solder to your flight controller for your first build and make a mistake, it can be quite a lot of trouble to fix your mistakes. But with using pins, we can simply plug and unplug wires and correct our mistakes and get a great build. And if you happen to fry a flight controller, you can simply replace it because you have such simple connections to work with. The only pin that we need to work with is this one right here. So we can take all of these and push them aside. This pin right here has all the connections that we're going to be using. This is your Naze 32 Rev 6 flight controller. You'll notice it's a genuine Afroflight. This one's the real deal. By the way, I want to stress the Rev 6. You don't want a Rev 5. The Rev 6 is the most current model. Let's start right here. When you connect this to power through either the USB connector or the battery connector, this will light up. Secondly, we have indicators right here that give us status indications of what the mode is of the flight controller. This is the USB port and we use that to program our flight controller with our Mac or our PC. We'll get into that in a later lesson. You'll notice these pins here labeled 1 through 6. We are going to be working with these. This particular flight controller can handle up to six multi-rotors. We're only going to be using the first four. We're going to be using six to actually supply power to the board. These are for peripherals, and we'll learn more about these when we flip over to the back of the board. Also, this is the spectrum radio connector. We'll talk about that more when we flip to the back of the board. And over here we have connectors and telemetry for other types of radio receivers, such as FreeSky and Tyrannus. Noteworthy also is here where it says boot. If you happen to brick this board and have to reprogram it, you take a wire and short these two pins out and that will allow you to do a reset and reflash this board. Again, we'll talk more about that later. This is the bottom of your flight controller and I want you to notice all this great documentation. You know exactly what every one of these pads do. And this is rare among flight controllers. Usually there is no notation whatsoever and you have to find online documentation to know what you solder to where. In this case, we have our header pins that we're going to be placing here. And the header pins are labeled again 1 through 6. We're going to be using the first 4 for our ESCs and 6 for our power. Take a look at these symbols right here. Minus, plus, and signal. Minus is our ground line. Positive is our power line and sense goes to the end here. The sense tells our ESCs how fast or slow to spin our motors. Coming around to the bottom, we have our buzzer connector. Our buzzer serves some great purposes. Mostly, it helps us find our quadcopter if it goes down and we cannot see it. This is a good part of our failsafe. If we switch our radio off, the beeper will sound and help us find our lost quadcopter. These other connectors are for other brands of radio receivers and we will not be using them. We will be using the spectrum connector to connect to our spectrum satellite receiver. Coming around to this side of the board, we have several different pads for different special purposes. I often use the LED to set up programmable LED lights on my quadcopter. Now, we're not doing that on this build, but we can, in the future, have an upgrade where we can put programmable LEDs that we can control through our software. Again, the only pads we're going to be working with are the pads here to control and power our quadcopter, the pad here for our buzzer, and the pad here for our radio control. Flipping back to the front of the flight controller, pay attention to this indication right there. That arrow is saying this is the front of your quadcopter and this is the tail of your quadcopter. This is where your camera is. This is where your battery connector is. That's very important because if you were to put this in sideways, your, your 
Quadcopter is not going to go straight if the board is crooked. So don't do that. In the beginning of this lesson, we spoke about the header pins, which are going to be like training wheels on our first quadcopter build. They're going to be positioned right in these pins. They fit just like that. And to flip it over, we can see the pins popping out, and we'll be applying solder to these later. The Spectrum radio connector will come right in there and will fit easily in those holes.